Hi, I'm Charlie, and due to unforeseen circumstances, I will not be able to attend this year's TEDx event. But I still wanted to share my story with the piano and the woman working. And therefore, um, the TEDx team decided to make a video, and I will be sharing the story. And I hope you all enjoy this. Hello, everyone. That's uh, and this is Nick on the drums and John on the bass. And before I begin my speech today, I would like to play, we would like to play a song for you. And uh, hope you guys enjoy. The genre was popularized in the 1920s, and a composer of the song that we just played, Reed Lux Lewis, was one of his founding fathers. And from this bit of information that you just heard me copy off of Wikipedia, and from what you just heard us play, you could probably tell that this kind of music is a bit odd, it's a bit unique. It deviates quite a lot from the usual classical piano that you hear Asian kids play, and it, it is also a bit out of time. So I think that most people wouldn't expect a Chinese kid like me to play music like the Bugu but I did not learn to play the Bugu Wiggy from day one. That should have been pretty obvious because, to be honest, that was quite amateurish. And for those of you that were here last year and heard our school's piano legend, uh, uh, Takayasu, play, I wouldn't have been a master. But I, that doesn't matter to me. I enjoyed playing the piano, and that is all that matters. I don't think that I would have said this if I were here last April, because back then I wasn't playing the piano at all. In fact, in the three years between 2015 in 2018, I barely touched the piano. But I did play the piano before. I started playing the instrument in 2018 when I was only six. I barely remember anything that happened before I was 12. But from the short episodes of flashing memories, uh, I remember a lot of shouting, crying, kicking the piano a lot, and frequently asked my parents if I could quit the piano. And but there was also some times when I felt good, and I felt the smuggish satisfaction after showing off to my friends. But simply put, it was complicated, and it was mostly frustrating. Did I enjoy playing the piano at those times? No, I did not. It was boring, it was monotonous, it was repetitive. It was entirely a burden that I would have been more than glad to bear with. But then, as I entered a new age of reason, known as the adolescence, I started having new ideas. It was a time when rebellious, irrational impulses flourished like the act on your face. I decided that I could make my own choices. I decided that I could rebel against my parents' control. And so I made the great choice of giving up the piano. It wasn't a great choice. About a year after I dropped piano, I began to feel the backlash of this poor decision. I realized that the piano was something that I took pride in. 
even though I rarely enjoy the process of playing the piano. The years of rigorous practice gave me skills that were beyond the capabilities of most uh, average piano players of my age, and I threw all that away. As I piano collected dust, uh, some of my friends who were once not as good as I was were now better than me. And it gave me pressure to restart playing piano, but with no other motivation, with nothing to guide me. And with my skills decayed over the years of disuse, I wasn't able to pick up even the old songs that I used to be able to excel at and perfectly play. And this frustration was overwhelming. And my video game addiction didn't help much either, because it distracted me from my failure to get what I wanted, to be good at piano. And I ended up not spending any more time on piano for a few years. But time moved on, and I slowly became desensitized to fight and threat. Uh, but I also redirected my, my addiction from distraction, to, from distraction from video games to distraction from YouTube. It's not a good change, but it also uh, made me discover what would eventually push me to dust off my piano and play the keys again, the boogie boogie. Now, on that fateful day, when I first saw someone play the boogie boogie on YouTube, I knew I was in love. I was in love with the fast rhythm and nature of this music. I was in love how everything was repeated in C major blues, and how everything was just happy and jumpy and joyful. And it's, it was almost as if no, you cannot be sad when you're listening to the boogie woogie. It was, it's almost as if like, if you imagine someone singing O MacDonald while crying their eyes out, right? You can't. And so, this, and the case in point is how I, is the time that I discovered the boogie woogie. It was 4 a.m. and I was writing a 1600 word essay, which was due 8 a.m. that same day. And I only had about 10 words down and I was contemplating my life, but that was not the point. That point is that I was stressed, and I was very tired too, and I was about to fall asleep. But, but then I opened up YouTube, which probably wasn't a good choice, but I saw this video, and all of a sudden I felt revigorated. I felt alive again. I felt optimistic about my chance of finishing up this essay, even though it doesn't really reduce from the fact that I still had 1,600 words to write. And this really shows the power of the book and, and mostly the power of music to bring happiness into our lives. And also another reason why I really like the Boogie Woogie is because of its very modular and reconstructed nature, which makes it very beginner friendly. And because I had played piano before I gave up my piano, um, I had the basic skills to pick up the Boogie Woogie very fast, uh, very quickly. And, and to demonstrate how fast someone can learn a Boogie Woogie, I'll show, uh, I'll show you how step by step you can build a Boogie Woogie song. Now first of all you need rhythm. Because the soul of Boogie Woogie is rhythm. Without rhythm, you wouldn't have the involuntary movement of the tip of the toe, right? And so you want that to happen. So what you do is just first start with a... And now we have a rhythm. But how does that sound like music? It sounds like a warning sound. It sounds like a buzzing. So we need a little vari variation to it. So you add a fifth note. Now it sounds a little more like music. But it's not, it's not hoppy, you know? It's like, it's, it's not, it's not like something's bouncing. Or it's not rhythmic. So what do you do? Well, Boogie Woogie's answer is you add more notes. And add more and more. You add the basic component of Boogie Woogie. And the rest of it is easy because the rest of what you need to do is just to add the right hand. And what you do is. Why or how they gave up, you will see the same story of 
and Williams. Fourth pair of players. Let's look at three samples of who all started, uh, who all started playing this instrument around the age of six, like I did, but later on, like I did. And all three of them, like me, admitted that they regretted their decision on this person. Now, this first person here admitted that she found playing the piano before. She was stuck at the beginning of the so as a result, she had to play the monotonous pieces of basic piano, and she decided that she couldn't sing, and she decided to give up. But then later on, she said that she was better. And the second person had a similar problem, where he also found that he couldn't understand the tediousness of having to practice piano, especially when he's forced to practice for, as you can see down there, for the Chinese standardized piano test, which made him play songs that he not like. And as a result, he also chose to give up when he moved to Shanghai. <coughs> and similarly, he also said that he regretted it. And the third person here straight up just admitted that he gave up because he was addicted to video games, which kind of resonated with me because, in part, I was also, I also did it because I thought it was to video games. But he also said that he regretted the decision. Here, you see that most of us wouldn't have given up if it weren't for a lack of motivation. And this logically stems from the environment that Chinese kids are subject to when learning an instrument. Parents and teachers often don't try their best to explain to the children the benefits of learning instruments. Too many, too many parents make their children play an instrument just for the sake of not losing face when the children can't play an instrument while others can. As a result, we never learn for ourselves, but as if we owe a duty to our parents. And because we were at an immature age, we never understood why we would spend so much time doing something we dislike so much. We end up learning only for the sake of learning and are blinded from finding a purpose beyond such a pointless cause. This is exactly why when we come to an age when we can defy our parents' control and make our own decisions, the choice we find the most plausible is, of course, to throw away this pointless burden by giving up. However, parents have the difficulties in this, and purpose isn't just something that you can get from our parents by making them try harder. I was lucky because I find, by my final with you, I eventually found my purpose for playing piano, which was just to be happy, to have a way to relax. But thinking in retrospect, I didn't find purpose by chance because it was founded on experience and discovered through exploration. In retrospect, I wouldn't have been able to, uh, to realize how joyful playing the boogie woogie was that if I hadn't been forced to stretch my skills to an extent where I could pick up the boogie woogie with ease even after three years of no practice. But also in retrospect, I wouldn't have discovered the boogie woogie if I, were, if I did not break myself free from the bounds of classical music set by my parents and my former teacher. Without either of the two conditions, I would still be in the same boat with my three friends right now. Not saying that they're any worse off than I am, they're all promising and uh, achieve students, but you got my point. In conclusion, I think that what I got from my experience with playing the movie was just a newfound, true passion for capital, but also a new understanding of what it means to find purpose in pretty much doing anything. I like to think of it as an as analogous to finding a way out of a dark maze. You have to spend time to stumble through the maze to know which ways are dead ends and to build the necessary skills and experience to navigate through the maze. But also, we need to be brave to explore uncharted paths that others think are dead ends. Only then can we find a way that works for each of us. And eventually, we all find a light at the end of the time. Now, my speech ends here, but before I go, I'd like to play another song just for the heck of it. And I hope you can, and thank you for listening, and I hope you guys can enjoy the next piece. It's called the Little Stop. Mm -hmm. 